Namaskaram Sadhguru. Can one use sexuality as a means to reach one's ultimate nature? Is uh, sexuality a route to the divine? If you want to look at it that way, everything can be a route to the divine. Everything in the existence, every atom in the existence can be a doorway to the divine. If you know how to open it, in that sense, yes, sexuality also is a door to the divine. The reason why somebody might have talked about it is because in many ways it is a certain amount of your life energy is dedicated to your sexuality unless you transform it naturally to ensure that the reproductive activity happens and the race is preserved, the human race is preserved, a certain amount of your energy is naturally dedicated to the sexual process. In terms of survival, procreation is an important part of survival because survival is not just about your body, survival is about survival of the species. So, when the survival instinct is about the species, naturally sexuality has a certain dedicated energy towards it. Unless you can consciously transform it, it is on in the system. You cannot deny it. Maybe it is on to different extents in different people, maybe not to the same extent. In some people it may be very strong, in some people it may be just a passing phase. So can we use sexuality as a way to the divine? I would advise that you handle sexuality as sexuality rather than trying to make it into a spiritual process because that involves extreme discipline which you are not capable of. I would say most of you, almost all of you are incapable of that kind of discipline which is needed where a natural survival instinct is involved to bring the necessary awareness to that and take that natural instinct which is trying to fulfill one kind of purpose and to make it into an ultimate possibility, it takes much more than you think. Now if you have no guilt problems about the basic biology of your body, you conduct it to the extent it is necessary for you as a person. You don't have to meet the social standards, nor do you have to compete with the stud farms <laughs> around you. Yes? As a person, to what extent is your need, you please see that. Don't set social standards to it. If you go by this, if you do not get involved with what's happening in the social standards, you will see most of you need very little sexuality actually. People are egged on by what's happening around. They think if they're not like how everybody else claim to be, then maybe they're not living a normal life. Because of these ideas, they are trying to do things which are not essentially them. If you go by your own natural process, you will see most people need very little. Only a few people are hyped sexuality. Rest of them, it is not such a strong thing. It is there, but it's not such a strong thing. Once it happened, a ninety-two-year-old man went to the doctor the doctor gave him a, gave him a clinical checkup and uh, he said, your blood pressure is little on the high. So immediately this ninety-two-year-old man asked, does, does it mean I have to give up my sex life? The doctor asked, well, which one, thinking about it or talking about it? <laughs> the world is thinking too much about it. 
They are thinking too much about it, it's unnatural. Sexuality is just a small part of you. Even in this physical body, sexuality is just a small part of your body, isn't it? Why has it become so big? Simply because of wrong ideas. First of all, you have not accepted the simple biology of a man or a woman the way it is. You're trying to make it something other than what it is, isn't it? If you just look at the human body just the way it is, there isn't much too much sexuality to it. But now it's all gotten twisted out in people's mind because the ideas of right and wrong, guilt and punishment and whatever nonsense, it's become so big. If you simply accepted it as a part of your life, it would be a very small part of your life then you wouldn't be thinking how to use your sexuality to reach the divine. So many other things are playing much more important role, isn't it? Food, going to the toilet, more involvement than sexuality, isn't it? <laughs> Why did you not think, can I use my going to the toilet process as a way to the ultimate? It's more essential, isn't it? Isn't it more compulsive? Isn't it more compulsive? Then why did you not think how we can use peeing as the way to the ultimate? <laughs> Such an idea never came, isn't it? Because nobody ever told you that you have to feel guilty or right or wrong about your toilet problem. <laughs> this one thing they made it so much, the more they made it, the more resistance and more struggle in your mind, it's filled your mind, that's the problem. So if you ask me, there are so many other easier ways to do it. Why try to use sexuality as a way to the divine? You know when… when we started the business activity in Asia, we were thinking of what names to give for this. They had come up with many names, I said, no, all that, we'll call it Isha business. They said, it's too direct. I said, I want it to be direct <laughs> because if you say anything else, People will have all kinds of ideas. People believe Isha can be doing only service activity and if you do business, people will come to do business with you and expect you to do dharma with them. <laughs> so with the very name I wanted it to be very clear, Isha business. We are doing business, don't have any questions about it nor do we have any qualms about it. So the same with you. You handle your spirituality separately, your sexuality separately, they're not connected. Can I connect them? Yes, you can connect everything to spirituality, possible. I'm not saying no. But why choose a difficult route? Why choose a route where there is so much compulsiveness and try to make it conscious? Instead of that, there are easier ways to become conscious.